Hello YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here, and today I'm going to show you how to diagnose a car that won't start due to the electrical problem. So, my wife sent me a text said, hey, the van won't start. I kind of asked her what was going on. She wasn't really able to give me a helpful answer. So, when I got home from work, came out, turned the key, and basically, although everything was lighting up inside the vehicle, when you turn the key it just went click and nothing happened so got out my multimeter tested her battery it was showing 11 volts those of you who know typically your battery needs to show 12 point something volts for it to start the car so the first thing i did was put the charger on the battery charged it up started the vehicle so I thought, okay, we have a dead battery. Let's see what's going on. So I let it sit for about an hour, came out, tested the voltage, it showed 10 volts. So that basically gives you a couple possibilities. One, it could be a dead battery. Two, you could have a parasitic drain, uh, basically like a light left on or wire touching somewhere. Anyway, it's pulling power. So what I did was disconnected the negative, charged up the battery again, pulled the charger off. It was showing 12 point something volts. And then I let it sit for a while, came back, tested it, and it was showing, I think, 10 volts. So I went ahead and got a new battery. We're gonna go ahead and put it in. And um, I'll also show you how to check, you know, let's say your battery was showing 12 volts after being on the charger. I'll show you how to check for a parasitic draw. So I'm gonna connect one lead from the multimeter to the ground cable. So it's connected, I don't have to touch it to there. Remember your multimeter, you're probably gonna have different places to set up your wire. So for this test, I had to move this lead over to here. Putting for, this one will do 20 amp. Some of them won't do that much power. But what you wanna do, set it to the amp test. Make sure all your wires are hooked up in the right place. Like I said, I've got one lead connected to the battery lead, negative, and then I'm gonna to touch this here to the actual negative and you see we're getting some different amperages going through there now and then it see it levels out at zero so I don't have a parasitic draw would be my guess based on the data I'm seeing here so basically what happens when you first connect your battery a whole bunch of stuff wakes up particularly in these newer vehicles your older vehicles there may not be that much electronics but these newer vehicles when you first connect the battery a whole bunch of systems kick on and then they quiet down so you can't judge the initial readings you get off your multimeter as being a parasitic draw you really need to let everything calm down and then see if you still have a drain so like here it took probably less than a minute and it's dropped down to basically zero Let's see how you let it off of there for 10 or 20 seconds then it kicks back on so it's woke up all those systems but let's say it was staying like this even after a while then what you want to do take a picture of your fuse box and pull your fuses one at a time and do not replace them. You see a lot of videos on YouTube, they pull the fuse, put it back in, pull the fuse, put it back in. The problem with that is this waking system. So if you pull the fuse and put it back in, you may wake you know, your computer or some other thing that draws current. So it's not really accurate to pull them and then put them right back in. You wanna pull all of them until you see the, the zero happen and then you'll know which fuse is drawing current and you can fix the problem. So taking the picture of the fuses helps you remember where to put them all back. So that's why I suggest doing the picture and why pulling them and then immediately replacing them one at a time isn't real helpful for this type of test. So with the data 
that I've just showed you, we've determined it's just a bad battery. I've already removed the negative cable. I'll disconnect the positive cable, the little tie down retainer, and then pull the battery out. These Dodge Grand Caravan terminals are different than any I've ever worked with before. Typically, what I've seen is they bolt on the side and they spread apart and loosen that way. These come from the top. They're 10 millimeter. It seems like you have to loosen them quite a bit before these will start moving. And that is your retaining bolt that holds the battery down. It's a 13 millimeter, possibly a half inch. They're so close. Half is like 12.6 millimeter, but the 13 millimeter is fitting over that. So that's what I'm going to use. You just basically unbolt it all the way, remove that bolt. There's probably a little plastic lip or something that'll come out too. And then you can lift your battery up and out. Now remember, batteries are very heavy, so you want to get yourself in a position where you have good leverage and can lift with your legs, particularly if you're infirmed like me. I have a torn bicep, so I basically only have one good arm. So lifting things like this is not ideal. And I'll put a video up one day about how I tore my bicep and all the adverse side effects I've had from it. And you want to make sure you orient the new battery correctly so that you don't hook up the ground to the hot and the hot to the ground. I don't know how much benefit this little flimsy insulator really provides, but go ahead and leave that on there. to get your terminals connected tightly. Loose terminals is often a problem that people don't realize. They think they have a dead battery or something and it's actually just a loose terminal. And make sure you secure the battery. want to wiggle it and make sure it's secure. I have this one on way too tight. We may hear some life in the car when I reconnect this. And I always wear eye protection when I'm working on a battery just because you never know. I normally wear gloves too, but for some reason I didn't put them on today. <laughs> so our terminals are tight. The battery's secure, not going anywhere. Call me crazy, I always save these things. I don't know why. <laughs> so we should be good to go. Van should start up and no more complaining from my wife. And you see new battery is Testing good at 12.6, so we'll start her up. And you see what's happening with this battery. <laughs> it's definitely driving the charger crazy. And you can see when it's being charged, it's at 14.4, which is pretty normal. That's what you'd want to see, like when your alternator's running. If I disconnect the charger, you see it's dropping really quick and it'll 
get down to 10 point something before it stops dropping so rapidly. So like I said, that makes me think it's just one bad cell in the battery. That's how you, you see that it's a bad battery and not a problem with the vehicle pulling the power out of it. And in case you're wondering why I didn't film this video on our beloved Crown Vic, you know, it's really hard to kill a battery on a Crown Vic, even if you're trying. And the moment of truth. So I hope the video was helpful. Appreciate it. Thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And please tell your friends about my channel. Thank you very much.